they isolate? If intelligence exists throughout the universe, we haven't noticed. But rather than assume this is because nothing is out there, it could also be that we're not looking in the right places or for the right things. We expect aliens to conquer the universe, transforming it in their wake, but perhaps they choose to keep to themselves where they might explore the limitless depths of inner space. They are quiet. The search for SETI assumed radio transmission will be how alien species communicate. We expect alien civilizations to be noisy in the radio spectrum, filling the airwaves with their music and television. But SETI is a reflection of our 1970s technology, a time when TV and radio broadcasts were the primary means of distributing information. Since then, we've largely shifted away from broadcast TV to closed circuit and point-to-point -point systems, cable TV, fiber optics, satellite dishes, and internet streaming services. These technologies offer more channels, and data transmission. They're also quiet. An alien civilization would be unable to intercept what you watch over Netflix. Though we still use radio, technologies are moving away from central broadcasts towards localized low-power systems, like cellular networks. Spread spectrum technologies increase the reliability and bandwidth of our transmissions, but also make them harder for outsiders to differentiate from background noise. Even if civilizations last for millions or billions of years, the window during which they transmit openly into space with high-power radios might last only a few decades. Lasers enable more efficient and higher throughput communication, but only recently has anyone started to look for alien laser transmissions. What about the lack of alien megastructures, like Dyson Swarms? It turns out even the technology of our science fiction is far behind the possible technology of alien civilizations. Building a Dyson Swarm around a star requires vast amounts of matter and energy. Entire planets would need to be disassembled to provide the raw materials. In the end, the Dyson Swarm would capture only 0.7% of the energy present in the mass energy of the star and it would take the entire lifetime of the star to capture. An advanced civilization could much more easily construct a black hole engine. Such an engine can turn 100% of mass into energy, 142 times the efficiency of fusion. Moreover, anything you feed it is fuel. Just drop something into it and the black hole turns it into pure energy in the form of Hawking radiation. Quote. A mountain-sized black hole would give off X-rays and gamma rays, at a rate of about 10 million megawatts, enough to power the world's electricity supply. End quote. Stephen Hawking. A civilization using micro black holes to meet its energy needs would be very difficult to detect. Black hole engines were inconceivable before 1974 when Hawking proved black holes radiate. The technologies available to civilizations millions of years ahead of us may be less fathomable than a black hole engine would be to an ancient Babylonian, we still don't even have a good understanding of gravity. Space is too big. Space is big. So big that many believe interstellar travel is so resource and time intensive that no intelligent civilization would seriously bother with it. This would account for why we haven't been visited. Take, for example, the fastest thing humans have ever launched, the Voyager space probes. Voyager 1 is traveling at 61,200 km per hour, 17 km per second. Despite this speed, it will take Voyager 40,000 years to even approach a nearby star. These speeds were obtained with chemical rockets, fundamentally the same technology as rockets used by the Chinese 800 years ago. Both burn chemicals in a confined space to blow hot gas out a nozzle. We know it's possible to do much better. In the late 1950s, the top secret project Orion aimed to build a nuclear pulse rocket that could reach the stars in a human lifetime. This design uses a series of controlled nuclear detonations behind the vehicle to propel it forward. 
In 1968, Freeman Dyson calculated that a nuclear pulse design like Orion could achieve 10% the speed of light, 17,634 times faster than Voyager. At this speed we could reach the nearest star in 43 years. But Orion would cost hundreds of billions of dollars, 10 times more than the Apollo program. Moreover, the 1963 Partial Test Ban Treaty prohibited nuclear detonations in space. Project Orion was cancelled in 1964. Since then, we've found better ways of reaching the stars. One of those ideas is the star chip. The miniaturization of computers allows fully functional spacecraft, complete with cameras, sensors, controllers, and antenna to be built on a computer chip. The entire craft could weigh less than a gram. Owing to its size, it could reach 20% the speed of light, accelerated by a collection of ground-based lasers. Plans for the star chip were made in 2016. If they follow through, we could reach the nearest stars by 2050. Once built, the system can launch thousands of the star chips. It would take the lasers only about 20 minutes to accelerate each star chip to 20% of the speed of light, 60,000 km per second. At 10% the speed of light, self-replicating von Neumann probes could cover the galaxy in a million years. These time scales are large in human time frames, but they are small on evolutionary scales. If Earth is an indication, it takes about 5 billion years to evolve a technological species, but only 1 million years, 0.02% that time, for that species to fill the galaxy with its technology. On evolutionary time scales, the galaxy is accessible. Earth itself has lapped the Milky Way 18 times in her history. Given ample time, the bigness of space is no barrier to a technological species that wants to fill the galaxy. With a 1.7 billion year head start, technological civilizations have had plenty enough time. If space is not too big, the mystery remains. Why don't we see clear evidence of anyone's presence? Assuming intelligent species arise and last, then only two explanations are left. They either universally decide not to spread outward, or they do spread outward but remain hidden. They leave our universe. At some point aliens might discover technology that allows them to leave the universe, to transcend their physical existence, or perhaps even to create, and explore realities of their own choosing. Traveling from star system to star system, would become repetitive, tedious, and given the time scales, would be immensely boring. Having the technology to explore infinite possibilities from their own home, advanced civilizations might quickly lose interest in exploring outer space. This solution to the Fermi paradox is known as the transcension hypothesis. But is leaving the physical universe possible? Leaving the universe is possible in a figurative sense. When someone is deeply engrossed in their device, or a computer game, they are in a sense in their own reality. Future virtual reality technology will make this truer still. Given the exponential progress of computing technology, getting ever smaller, denser, and faster, it may soon be possible to live in virtual reality. The best physically possible computers, those of the greatest speed and storage capacity, look little different from a black hole. To perform a computation, matter would be dropped into the hole in a specific pattern, the hole would perform the desired computation and return the result via Hawking radiation. Black holes are in a sense detached from our universe. If an alien civilization builds black hole computers, and if they put themselves into virtual reality programs run on these computers, then in a very literal sense such a civilization will have physically left our universe, they would no longer be part of our space-time, and would live in a designer reality that's effectively causally isolated from our universe. According to the Kardashev scale, technological civilizations advance by consuming ever more energy. The energy of their planet, their star, and eventually their galaxy. But maybe we got it wrong. 
The Barrow Scale proposes that civilizations should be ranked according to their mastery over the smallest scales. Level 1, manipulates objects on its own scale. Level 2, manipulates genes. Level 3, manipulates molecules. Level 4, manipulates atoms. Level 5, manipulates atomic nuclei. Level 6, manipulates subatomic particles. Level Omega, manipulates spacetime structure. The smaller we can miniaturize technology, the faster and more efficient our computers become. Instead of exploding outward across the galaxy, civilizations might explode inward towards ever smaller dimensions. Quote. If the transcension hypothesis is correct, inner space, not outer space, is the final frontier for universal intelligence. Our destiny is density. End quote. John Smart. Exploring reality with computers offers many benefits over exploring space with rockets and telescopes. Unrestricted access, simulation lets them explore realms they can't get to physically. Such as past and future epochs, regions beyond the cosmological horizon, even other universes having different laws. Provides faster answers, with a fast enough computer, they could simulate the entire billion-year evolutionary history of a planet in hours, rather than wait billions of years to watch it unfold. More efficient, vast amounts of energy are needed to accelerate even a small object to a fraction of the speed of light. That energy could be much better spent on CPU cycles. In a space exploration, the inner space of consciousness is just as infinite and rich as outer space, if not more so. Virtual reality can provide any possible experience, the only limit being imagination. Exploration of inner space might even be the meaning of life. The transcension hypothesis's answer to why we don't see evidence of technological civilizations is not that they don't exist or that they universally destroy themselves, but that they have miniaturized themselves. Accordingly, they remain undetectable to our current technology.